Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Shenzhou 5 spacecraft in 172nd scale from Trumpeter. It's kit number 01615, and it was released a few years back, but it's still available at online auction sites. Now, when the nation of China sent their first man into space in 2005, you know, they had reasons to be proud because they joined uh, the elite pair of nations, the U.S. and Russia, in those endeavors. Now, this kit uh, appears to be copied from a scale mock-up of the spacecraft that was released by the Chinese around the time of launch. Now, it has some discrepancies from the real launch vehicle, but still it makes a good starting point. Uh, for a modeler who wants to make those corrections. Now the kit only has uh, 83 pieces but there's some tricky construction techniques required and we'll show you how to do that for this level 2 skill uh, for intermediate builders kit. Here are the contents for the kit. As you can see it's nicely designed on two sprues with a base and a stand wire. We'll be using Model Master liquid cement for most of the construction and there's really no glass here to per, uh, per se, so we won't be using any clear glue or cements. Uh, but sometimes uh, super glue can come in handy for uh, parts that are small uh, or hard to uh, keep together. We'll start construction with the return module because it comes in just two halves. So just uh, put some sparing glue on the seams and assemble the two halves together and set them aside to drive. Uh, you may need a rubber band to keep that into position until it dries. I used a sharpie to uh, copy the part numbers onto the inside of the uh, lower section of the spacecraft to keep them straight as I was building it. Panel marked number two here has a notch at the base to start out construction uh, to its uh, base portion and you just go ahead and glue that into the uh, into the lower base and then add panel 3 and keep the seams as close together as possible uh, to avoid as much uh, work later as you can. Now uh, we'll be going around the perimeter here and adding the rest of the panels. I used some slow setting tube glue for this to make sure that I could uh, adjust the panels and keep all the seams together around the perimeter. As you know, there's, there's four different panels here, so a little jostling is what you need to get everything into the best position and then let it set aside to dry. Now we can orient the uh, uh, re-entry module uh, in, onto the command module in about this configuration and use some liquid cement to glue it into position. Now we get down to the business of filling seams. There's a lot of them on this one, so st I start with uh, some putty uh, thinned with, uh, in this case I used a 3M glazing compound thinned with some acetone uh, to make it thin enough to uh, spread on to the seam. And then uh, you just sand it off with uh, finishing tools, um, some sandpaper, and uh, whatever is required uh, to get a nice smooth finish and uh, keep that uh, close to the body so that you don't disrupt any of the detail. Now assemble the uh, antenna to the payload section and set that aside to dry. Make sure that they're perpendicular and vertical uh, from the plane of the payload section. Now remove the parts for the payload section and uh, clean up any flash that might exist. Although this is a pretty clean kit you still have to pay a little attention to the edges. And then go ahead and number the pieces once again um, so that you know which order they go in. And then assemble them uh, to each other, uh, with uh, at least start with the two halves and then let that start to set with some, some slow setting glue. Add the third outer panel there and then the, uh, the end cap as you see here uh, to the payload section uh, with some slow setting glue and then once again uh, Adjust all of the seams for the most uh, appropriate fit. Once again, apply your favorite putty and clean up those seams. Now, there's also a panel uh, that goes on to the side there. You can see in the upper right on the module uh, that it is uh, marked out uh, for application there. And then go ahead and use some liquid cement and glue that into position. The top of the unit had some seams where the three pieces come together and I used some uh, squadron putty here to uh, uh, patch those seams and smooth that out. Uh, there's some ejector pin marks uh, in the uh, 
bottom of the command module here and the one uh, that's up towards the top at about uh, 11 o'clock there it'll be mostly uh, obscured by the rocket nozzles that go on those uh, bezels but um, the other four next to the holes um, they would they should be uh, filled and smoothed out go ahead and grab the uh, rocket nozzles for the thrusters there and um, you can go ahead and assemble those uh, they're pretty simple affairs just clean up the um, the side blocks there or the base should say uh, and the nozzles themselves uh, and set those aside to dry for later you'll find that on the uh, solar panels there's some uh, ejector pin marks on the uh, rotational shaft there uh, to the right of this photo um, and those should be filled and smoothed off too you'll also find on the edges of the shorter panels uh, that they have some sprue attachment marks and, and the larger ones actually uh, that will need to be um, filed off and sanded smooth as well. So I used some masking tape to tape off the attachment points there uh, where the uh, shafts go into the spacecraft and then I painted the um, solar panels a flat black. Now remove the tape and um, I used some gold metal foil to uh, cover the solar panels because once you uh, smooth it out you can actually still see all the detail on the panel and it has a gold foil uh, look to it um, on the actual spacecraft so I, I just uh, spread that on there and smoothed it out and then um, uh, you know made sure any of the seams uh, were touched up with some gold paint around the edges some of the holes uh, that accept the external pieces on the command module need to be enlarged a little bit to uh, for those parts to fit. So uh, I just test fit the parts, you know, before um, being glued, and then I just used a pin vise to um, enlarge the holes to the right uh, size using the hobby drill. Uh, that was um, just right until I got a good fit from the mating part. Now we can add the external parts to the main body uh, according to the instructions uh, such as the uh, booster blocks here, uh, the mounting bars for the boosters and go ahead and uh, use uh, some liquid cement to put those into place and there's some more sensors and things that uh, additionally are added so go ahead and add those at this time and then we can uh, also in add the aerial to the top of the payload section and uh, note that there were some seams on that too that needed to be sanded and filled as well. Um, the best color scheme I could determine was that this thing was uh, white, silver, and gray. And so I painted the lower half, uh, including the command mod or the return module, uh, flat white. And then I taped uh, off the upper section there, and and the I should say the middle section, and painted that silver. Um, so the reentry module is uh, uh, also painted a medium gray primer for the payload section. Next I wrapped the antenna with some chrome foil and then uh, trimmed off uh, where the antenna are attached to the base there. In this photo you can see where the, uh, the chrome antenna really stand out from the medium gray uh, of the uh, payload section there. And there's also uh, a black line. I used a piece of uh, trim tape to make that black line around that section painted the main booster rocket nozzles uh, silver uh, along with the um, the thruster uh, nozzles they're also silver. Now we can complete construction by adding the solar panels uh, just by inserting the uh, uh, them into the receiving holes on the spacecraft uh, and note that uh, it's a tight fit so they can remain rotational if you want to change them or you can glue them into place. I painted the base, uh, the, the display base, uh, flat white, and after that had dried, I used a product called Parafilm M to mask off the base, and then I just used a hobby knife to go around the uh, indent there for the uh, Chinese nation uh, that's embossed on the base, and I cut that out so that it just exposed that interior portion. I then used a bright red Krylon spray to spray the exposed area and then let that set and dry. Here's the completed base uh, showing the mainland of China on the display. Well there you have it. Just add your prop rod to the display base and into the receiver on the uh, spacecraft and you have something that makes for a really nice looking display.
something different for your shelf. Um, despite the fact that it has a small number of pieces, uh, it takes a little bit of work to get this uh, model looking good. Now, of course, you could just assemble it, but then you've got some pretty ugly seams that weren't on the real spacecraft. So it takes some putty and some filling and a lot of patience, especially those seams on the ribbed portion around it. Um, the panels, of course, are pretty easy with some gold foil wrapped around them. And um, like I said, you can adjust them for uh, tilt, etc. Uh, but they usually work in pairs, so they should both be uh, tilted in the same direction. Now, once that's uh, done, you can uh, be proud. And if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.